so stressed out. I was up every night until like 3 a.m. Whereas once you're a small business owner, everything's your fault. You can't just ignore it, like everything. Uh, so I really struggled with that. It made me feel so burnt out. I was like, I started this. Ashley Kane is a small business owner in the United States. Ashley, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited about this. Like, like I said just a few moments ago, I'm so excited to do a little bit of long form content. I mostly just do my shorts and reels and I've really been wanting to get into more of the YouTube side of things. Mostly I just do yeah. YouTube shorts, but I'm really excited to do something with a longer format and have give people the chance to get to know me a little bit more. <laughs> So awesome. thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> My pleasure. Because, yeah, I know you are busy, busy, busy. And I'm glad that we're able to um, get a time together. So <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So actually, to get started, I'd love to ask you, how was your day yesterday? Um, Yesterday was actually very calm and very chill. I actually hung out with the kids and tried to make it a more focused on being a mom day. Some days I really try to commit to getting prioritizing getting work done because I believe you can't be all three at once. You know, you can't be productive, but then also be a very present parent, but then also just trying to do everything at once. So I think it's really important to try to focus on like a certain goal for the day. So today I was a little bit more focused on filming and getting caught up on work. Whereas yesterday, I had a great day. I went down to the boat ramp by our house with the kids and we did a lot of painting. Um, we did a lot of fun things. Obviously, I still did a few work things. I'm always on social media. I try to post every single day, no matter what. <laughs> um, but yeah, yesterday was a very relaxing day of just hanging out with the kids. Oh, fantastic. Because I know uh, you're a stay at home mom. But anyway, before we get into all that, I want to ask you the next question, which I think is like a very crucial part. Now, this question I call a backstory snapshot, okay? So, backstory snapshots are either moments or events that may have occurred in your early years growing up or a few years back. And so, what would you say are your backstory snapshots that you believe have shaped what you're doing for your business? Please excuse the audio at the start. It does get better. Thank you. Um, so I feel like we could go way back because even in high school, I was interested in entrepreneurship. I was actually working at the Home Depot and then I was also flipping furniture on the side. <laughs> and I started to realize that I was making more money flipping furniture than I was working at the Home Depot. Of course, I was 16, so it was a little bit more than a minimum wage job. Um, but I was loved that I could do my own thing on my own time and have the potential to make even more money than when I had a job and had to kind of conform to someone else's schedule and someone else's rules. Um, so I've just always loved entrepreneurship. I was reading uh, entrepreneurship books even in high school. So I've always been interested in it, but I definitely wasn't completely sure of what I wanted to do. I thought the furniture flipping thing was cool, but it definitely wasn't, didn't really ignite that spark in me. Um, so then I went on to private nannying, which is, I was kind of working for myself, but kind of not, you know, I, t I was taking on my own clients with that. And then I tried so many different things until I found what I really loved, which is soap making. I had done princess parties, dressing up as Elsa to children's birthday parties. That was really interesting. That was great. I love working with kids, but again, wasn't really for me. I'm not really the type of person to get in front of a crowd and sing along to songs and all of that. So that was a lot of fun, but also just wasn't exactly it for me just yet. So I definitely think it's really important to try out different things. And if something's not for you, move on faster. Like you'll find the thing that's for you. Now there is times to stick with it. Like there are hard things where you might get kind of bored and you're going like every day kind of looks the same for me. I'm making soap, I'm making videos, but I really enjoy it even though it's the same thing over and over again. Um, so I would say that's it. I tried a lot of different things until I landed on soap making. Um, 
I don't think I would be as successful as I am now if I didn't have my daughter just because it created a line in the sand for me of I have no choice but to be successful with this like I don't want to go get a job I don't want to have to put her in daycare there's not very many choices for daycare where I live I live in the middle of the forest so (laughs) there's no daycares close by me or anything um so I had no choice but to be successful with this because I wanted to be home with her and I do need to make the extra income so it was almost kind of forced I kind of had to burn all of my bridges and just make it work no matter what (laughs) so yeah I I would say all of that together is what brought me here wow that is that is inspirational and that's amazing and I you know I'm here nodding going yep 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 there are so many uh, things that I'd love to unpack and I can say I really relate to what you're saying, um, you know, having your daughter and then, you know, thinking I need to do something. And it's a bit similar to what I did as well because I do hair and skincare and I use natural and organic ingredients just like you do as well. So another reason why I was like, oh, my goodness, I have to interview Ashley. So, you know, um, yeah, you know, when you said yes, I was like, this is fantastic. Yeah, so there's like a lot of relatable stories with us I, after having my daughter I wanted I needed to take care of her hair so then I had to go and explore and find you know some products for her hair but I couldn't find anything so I started making stuff just for fun and I got into the accidental business and that's how I started my business as well so I'm like well done well done Ashley for doing that so on that note so um so was this a few years ago when you started was on your Instagram you said you started this two years ago is that correct yeah so I started making soap about two years ago it was right after my daughter was born and same thing with you of I just wanted to make soap for my family I wanted to have better ingredients better products and then I started making the soap I gave it out to friends and family because you make a batch of soap you have eight bars of soap it's like you only need a couple so you start giving out to friends and family I got a lot of great feedback and then I was like maybe I can make this into a business and I'm someone who just does things kind of on a whim so i just went on facebook and found a couple farmers markets close by me and i just signed up and it's just grown from there um so yeah i started about a couple years ago i really started on the business probably about i want to say a year and a half ago just about yeah so so tell me so when you so you gave out the products to the soap to family and friends and they obviously gave you awesome feedback is that correct yeah (laughs) yep and then were they requesting for you to sell it or did you just think maybe i should sell it and 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 if so how did you go with the nerves and thinking oh really should i do this oh i don't know tell me about that day when you decided yes i'm going to sell it that's it i'm just going to sell my stuff so at first i gave it out and then i had friends and family messaging me like can i buy some from you uh, i had no idea what to do i was like i don't know how much to charge for this i don't know what to do this uh, is it even worth money i don't know and that stressed me out so hard um at the beginning stages, it was really hard for me to tell people a price for the soap. Um, that was so challenging to be like, oh, this costs this much. I always felt like I just wanted to give it to everyone for free, especially starting out before I really gained the confidence in my products. And I really believe the confidence comes from just doing it. Uh, like we talked about at the beginning, I really get into, I don't read as many books nowadays, but I really get into lis- listening to entrepreneurship podcasts, especially. So like Alex Hermosi, I love his podcast. I love Andy Frisella's podcast. And one thing Andy Frisella talks about is that the co- your confidence really comes from doing it. And I really felt like that was the case for me. Like I just had to push through it. And now I've sold so much soap that I don't think twice about being like, this is what I offer. This is how much it costs. And I don't feel bad about it either because I'm just presenting someone with an offer. They don't have to take it. Um, There's no bad feelings in it. So I think that's where a lot of people get wrapped up in. They feel like they're doing something bad when they're selling something, 
but you aren't. You're just giving someone an offer and it's up to them of whether or not they want to take it. So it's really not something to feel bad about. But if you haven't done it before, it's really hard not to feel somewhat guilty of asking money for the product that you're selling. So I just think it just took time for me to get over that. And I proved to myself that I can sell a lot of soap and people will buy it for that price and everything's okay. And I'll get great feedback. People will love the soap and they'll buy more. So I, I think it just comes from doing it. Oh, fantastic, <laughs> Ashley. And this is a great time for me to go on to the next thing where I love on your um, Instagram, you posted, I just have to have a look over here on my my notes here, you said, um, it's not as bad as it seems, just keep moving on, you know, when you're feeling a bit unsure. And I just love that attitude that you you expressed in that reel. And I thought that was beautiful. So obviously what you said, was that related to that um, reel in particular or was it because you got a lot of questions from people? So Honestly, I always feel like it can apply to anything, like anytime I have something go wrong. Um, and I feel like I really got that attitude. I've had a lot of great mentors in my life. So I used to be competitive in weightlifting and my coaches for weightlifting, you know, sometimes you're weightlifting weights and I competed in the clean and jerk and snatch, which is what you see it for weightlifting at the Olympics. And some days it's just, everything is going wrong. You can't make a lift, right? Like you just want to lay on the floor and cry. And one day my coach said to me, like, you get five minutes to cry. Then you just do the next thing. You do the next thing. You get five minutes to feel bad for yourself. And then you don't get to feel anything. Just keep moving forward. And I've always applied that to anything that I do. Anytime something goes wrong, I give myself a few moments to feel bad about it, to feel whatever I want to feel about that. And then it's time to just get back to work and move on and keep moving forward because that's how you get where you want to be like it's not linear you know so you just keep moving forward and then you'll get through the thing and you'll come up with solutions and everything will be okay i have things go wrong all the time i have soap batches go wrong um orders disappear sometimes like things things usually go wrong but we get through it you come up with solutions you just keep taking action and then you make it through so that's why I like to tell people because people get too wrapped up in little things, you know, like I'll have people yeah. message me like, I want to start a soap business. I don't know how to label soap. I'm like, that is, you should not get hung up on anything like that. You know, just, just do something. You could print out a piece of paper and cut it up and write something on it. Like you don't need to overthink it too much. So yeah. I just like to tell people, just keep doing something, just do something. <laughs> and then you'll start working your way through it. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's beautiful. It really is lovely. And when I was scrolling through your Instagram, the comments, it was people were just loving everything that, you know, you were putting up. And you can tell, I could tell just by scrolling through that, you know, this follower is actually has a, a relationship with you. And I was thought, I thought that is just impressive because in the way they comment to you, I think, yeah, they really do maybe like is it through dms that they get that relationship you know with you built um built up or was it just by you know them shopping and then you commenting or you sending them comments in the you know um when they order stuff how do you build that relationship with them or is it just through social media instagram or how do you do that because it's just beautifully done Oh, thank you. I would say it's through social media. I try to respond back to as many comments as I can. Obviously, I've had a lot of recent growth on my social medias. So some days I'll get 100 messages across all the apps and comments, messages and comments all together. And I'm just like, I, I can't respond to every single one of these. So I try to respond back as much as I can. Um, sometimes people ask me questions that I would have to go like way too in depth on that I just have to be like, hey, you need to sign up for my class. Like I cannot mm -hmm. type this all out. Um, but anything that's like a quick question, even if they're not one of my students, if it's a soap making question, I can answer like that. I'm happy to answer it. I'm happy to help out as much as I can. Um, but just trying to help people without expecting anything back, you know? Yeah. So if they, like I said, if they ask me a simple soap making question, I'm happy to answer it. Or if they ask me a simple question about social media, I'm happy to answer it. I want, it's important to try to give as much value as possible 
with everything you do. So whether it's selling a product, trying to make it the best product you possibly can, um, social media, trying to teach people or entertain them as best you can. You're just always trying to give your best to people. And I believe it always comes back to you in return, even if you're not seeking for it to immediately. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a great segue because I know you have a, is it a natural soap making class? Do you want to tell me about that class? And um, yeah, feel, you know, feel free to expand on um, like, you know, that sort of information so people listening can either subscribe, go and find you and do all that stuff and, yeah, start working with you. <laughs> awesome. So I started posting on Instagram, on TikTok. I really started on TikTok. That's where my following grew first. Um, yeah. Instagram's pretty recent that it started to really grow. But I started posting to TikTok and I just post like me making soap every day. And at first I started the business just thinking like, I'm just selling soap, you know, but then I started making all these posts and a lot of people had questions and I really enjoyed answering the questions. And then it turned into posting tutorial videos. And then it turned into people wanted, well, I was getting asked all the time to make a full class um, that covers all the details to getting started in soap making. So that's really how the class came about is I had so many people asking me for it that I was like, okay, I. I guess I kind of have to do it. And then same thing of, I believe you should just like, just dive in, which is what I tend to do. I was like, okay, I'm just going to go on my website and post the soap making class. Like it's going to be live on zoom this day. And I posted it and I think I got like 30 signups for my first class. And I thought that was huge. I was like, I was like, Oh, I thought I would only get a few people signed up and it stressed me out. It definitely put me in a really uncomfortable situation, which I think is important. Um, it definitely pushed me to be a lot better, but I just put it up there. I figured out everything I would say in the class, the type of soap I would make. Um, I laid everything out because I had to. I put it on my website. I had to figure mm -hmm. it out. <laughs> I had people signed up and I just went for it. And it's just evolved over time, especially because I did that. I got to look at people face to face on the Zoom and find out what beginner kind of questions beginners have because I've been making soap not for a long time, but I've been making soap for long enough that I think I kind of forgot what it's like to be just starting out. Um, especially since not everyone's like me where they're like, I'm just going to order this and start doing this and read a bunch of books. I'm just going to go for it. I'm a very, I'm just going to go for it type of person. So I had to definitely talk to people face to face figure out what I could get better at explaining. And it's just evolved from there. And that's all because of all the students I've had in the class who have given me feedback. And even now I'm working on putting together a part two soap making class and also re-recording the first one because I do have all that feedback from everybody. So I'm always looking to make it better and to expand. But basically the class just goes over all the basics you need to soap making, the equipments, the materials, um, lye safety, because you do need to be safe when working with the lye. It covers a few different tutorial recipes and we touch a little bit on formulating just because I think it's important to just kind of dip your foot into it, even though I don't recommend for beginners to start immediately formulating recipes. But I do think that having a basic understanding of formulating does help you a little bit when you're making the soap to maybe even understand when something goes wrong, what possibly went wrong. But you could, you could get, you go all the way down the rabbit hole of soap making. <laughs> There's so many different subtopics to talk about. And it's hard not to lead into every next thing when you start mm -hmm. talking about it. Like I do the live sessions where I ask, I answer all the questions of my students. And it's so hard not to talk for like two hours, just going deeper and deeper into soap making. Because you can, you can really just keep going. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So um, with your natural ingredients, do you want to tell me a bit about your natural ingredients? Because I loved your Instagram reel where you posted, I think it was you said people were like shocked and worried that you were using avocado and Greek yogurt, okay? And I thought that was a great post. And I think I went I went and read some of the comments and, comments and I was like, yeah, go, Ashley. Do you want to tell me about that? And um, how did that come about? So 
The beauty of making cold process soap is that mm -hmm. there's so many different ingredients you can add and you don't need a preservative for those ingredients because mm -hmm. they go through the saponification, which is the chemical reaction that turns it into soap. And basically the soap just doesn't leave an environment for those ingredients to go bad in. So you can add ingredients like milks, avocado, different purees like that, and they all add different properties to the soap. And you can have so much fun with soap making, and I didn't even know that you could make soap like this a few years ago. I actually was walking around at a farmer's market, and there was a woman there selling soap, and I was really amazed by it. And then I started doing all my research at home. I bought some of her soap. I tried it out. I loved it. So that's how I started also learned about soap making itself. Um, but yeah, there's so many different ingredients you can add to soap. Soap is really just made out of oils, water, and lye. So it's super simple ingredients. And there's just so much that you can do with it using natural ingredients. And that's what really amazes me about soap making is there's just this whole world of ingredients you can add that will all make the soap a little bit different and it's just so much fun to experiment with soap making and i think that's another reason why so many people fall in love with soap making like you you spend your whole life making soap and adding different things to it <laughs> mm, yeah fantastic and uh they look delicious absolutely beautiful and you know when I make with my skincare uh, and the hair care. Sometimes I would ask my, you know, family, do you think this is the ice cream from the other day or do you think this is my hair and skincare? And they could not tell the difference because <laughs> it just looks so delicious and so yummy. And and on that note, um, with your pig fat, I think you did a reel where you were showing us, you know, pig fat and you said that you – didn't know that you could actually transform that in, and make it into soap. Can you tell me about that um, experience and how you did your soap using pig fat? Yeah, so <laughs> now quickly, if you are watching Small Business Owners Secrets to Success and you have not subscribed yet, please, 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 can I ask you to subscribe and share, like and comment if you can do that because it really, really helps me a lot and it helps spread the word of how small business owners can be supported. So be sure to do that. And thank you once again. Back to the podcast. Because, yeah, so because I teach soap making, I want to be as well-rounded as possible, you know, mm -hmm. because people are always asking me different questions. I've had a ton of homesteaders reach out to me and go, hey, I have pigs on my farm. Um, I really want to be able to use the pig fat to turn into soap. Could you teach me more about how to do this? And I never want to teach something if I haven't done it myself. So that's my biggest thing is I really wanted to try it out for myself before I answered any questions at all on it. And I was getting quite a lot. I have a lot of homesteaders that follow me because there is self-sufficiency that goes along with making your own soap. So yeah. that's one of the biggest reasons I did the pig fat soap is that I wanted to be able to confidently answer their questions. Um, but I love using animal fats and soap. I'm particularly a big fan of tallow, especially. That's one of my favorites in soap. It just gives so many amazing properties. But it was really cool to experience rendering the lard myself. I had never done that. The tallow I normally buy already rendered because I do have a business and it would be a lot for me <laughs> to try to render all of that tallow and then sell that much soap. So it, I'm just always trying to become a more well-rounded soap maker so that I can become a more well-rounded teacher. Yeah, beautiful. Really, really lovely. And with uh, the other one, before I forget, this was a great one because um, last night I was you know, going through your feed just to, like in case I missed any post that you did. And I had the my headset in and I was just on my phone and my husband was next to me and he didn't actually, he couldn't quite see all the text. And then he said to me, is that mashed potato? And I said, I laughed <laughs> because, yeah, you know why you're laughing, don't you? So, because um, I think the caption was, this is not mashed potatoes. And, yeah, so can you tell me about that soap? making process and is that a is it a cold process or a hot process can you tell me more so that one is hot process and the reason okay. i started a video like that is the very first time i posted about hot process soap 
all the comments were like, I thought she was making mashed potatoes. I thought she was making mashed potatoes. Can I eat that? And um, so I just thought that was so funny and I always like to run with it. Um, I try to always have fun with the content because people go on Instagram and TikTok and everything to be entertained. So I try to be a little bit entertaining, but that's hot process soap and hot process soap is very similar to cold process soap where you're making it from scratch. But with hot process soap, we're using heat to force that th soap through saponification, which is the chemical reaction that turns it into soap. Whereas with cold process soap, we mix everything together, pour it in the mold, and we let it go through the process on its own. With hot process soap, we're just forcing it through with heat. But it looks like mashed potatoes as it goes through the different stages. And in soap making, yeah. that's actually called the mashed potato stage. So that's no. what makes it so funny. And like I said, I just like to run with the jokes. <laughs> like I get a lot of Fight Club references. Have you ever seen the yes. movie Fight Club? Yes, yes, I, yes, I have. <laughs> any post that does really well, I get at least one Fight Club reference <laughs> in there. <laughs> You well, I love the way you approach it all on social media. And moving on to that, um, so social media, you said that Instagram is like your only form of ad. Now, do you mean like advertising as in paid or just creating content? So, just creating content, I don't yeah. run any ads anywhere. Um, I don't yeah. even go do events really anymore. I did when I was first starting out, I'd do all the local um crafts um uh, not craft craft shows and farmers markets that's a great way to just get out there when you don't have a following yet but i've definitely loved being able to connect with people all over the world online but yeah all i do is post on social media and that's how everyone finds me um there's a little bit of word of mouth of two of course but i don't run any ads or anything like that so yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, well, fantastic because with my small business, I, I I never really, you know, ran any ads or anything like that. But then I think just a few a few months ago, I sort of started and I thought, no, it doesn't really seem to do what I really want it to do. There seemed to be some sort of like an algorithm, I don't know, blockage. So I'm like, you know, what? I'm just going to create content and make it a very um, informative content you know content creation and i think a lot of small business owners can definitely relate where you know they're thinking i don't have the time should i post today should i post what time and i was like you know what i'm just going to post whenever i want to post so is that the sort of attitude that you went along with um for your social media content creation you're doing it completely right because people overthink it people overthink yeah. the content um, just take a video of whatever you're doing every day. Like you're packing orders, set up the camera. You're making mm -hmm. your products, set up the camera. Uh, you're going to the post office, set up the camera. You can post about True. anything, you know? Like people True. people just overthink it. Um, there is definitely certain concepts that help you do better. Um, I've posted probably every day, just about every day. Probably missed a few days here and there for about ever since I probably started my social media, not on Instagram, I've been a lot better about it on TikTok. At first, I didn't think Instagram would grow. Like I just had this pre preconceived notion in my head, which was not true. I should have been working just as hard at Instagram as I was TikTok. But I would post every single day to TikTok, sometimes three times a day. And you learn what does well and what doesn't. Like you, and every single time you post, you try to make it better than the last time. Like sometimes my videos from a year ago, you know how I'll give you the notification of like this video from a year ago, I'll look at it, I'll be like, oh, <laughs> compared to how I'm doing now. But if I hadn't started there, I wouldn't be here. So yeah. you learn so much from just doing it. So yeah. I certainly agree with you and I went through different sort of phases with my small business where I was like, nah, I'm not going to do this every day. This is ridiculous. And I just had a, like a break for a month or two or, you know, whatever. And then I came back on and it's like, oh, great. I have to start from scratch because the algorithm needs to sort of work out what's going on with me. Yeah. And so I've been through all the ups and downs and, like I had the love-hate relationship with social media and now I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to post like there is no algorithm. I'm just going to post like there's no one watching or you know, that sort of thing and just have fun with it. And like you said, it is so true. You, you, you do learn 
what's working and what's not. And I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. This is what you sort of want. Okay, that's fine. But I'm not like too hard on myself. And I think in the past I have been very hard on myself. And this is why I love your your Instagram um, and the way that you sort of approach things. And, you know, you can really tell. You can learn a lot about somebody when you go through their feed and stuff. And I, I really love your vibe, your positivity. And, you know, you – and I love that you were not gatekeeping and you were like, you know, telling – your followers, this is what it is, this is what you do, this is what you don't do. And so good on you. And I think that is something, you know, we all need to sort of uplift one another and you, you, you're you doing it beautifully. And um, so thank you for bringing that vibe and energy into into our world. And so, oh, yeah. Thank yeah. you. I really appreciate that. Oh. <laughs> and and talking about how wonderful you are with your business, I want to move on to the next thing, which is the Soap Saves Lives concept that you're doing. So is it like an organisation that you're supporting? Can you tell me a bit more about, about that, um, the Eco Soap Bank Scrap Pack? Yeah, so I had been following them for a while, actually, and I just had pretty recently signed up for their Scrap Pack which is mm-hmm. where you send in your leftover soap or soap that maybe aesthetically doesn't look exactly how you wanted it to look. Or as soap makers, you know, we end up with a lot of soap ends. <laughs> and sometimes you have so much that you don't know what to do with it. But soap is really beneficial, especially to people that don't have it. It really helps to prevent disease. Hygiene is super important. So they're an organization where you can send in all of your soap scraps and they hire women to rebatch the soap, which basically is where you like shred it up and you melt it down and then you turn it into new bars of soap and they give it to people that need it, which is a really cool concept. And what an easy way for me to help as someone with a soap business, you know, I have all this laying around. I don't really know what to do with it. So they just started an amazing thing that is like I said so easy for someone with a soap business to be able to help and if they do have a thing where you need to make a $50 donation if you're sending in a big box but if you're part of the scrap pack you do a $10 donation and if you're just starting out I know there's some soap makers that are like I just started my business I can't afford that Um, There's tons of local shelters, I'm sure, around you where you can send your stuff in, and they're so happy to have it. So I just think that's a really awesome, easy way that someone with a soap business can do something good, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, well, fantastic, and and congratulations. I'm sure the organization are very, very happy to have you join join them. So well done. Oh, thank you. That's the other thing I love about (laughs) having a platform is that I can help Mm. by just having, just posting about them, you know, Mm. like, I love that you, once you have an audience, you know, you can do good things with it. So, yeah, Yeah, for sure. (laughs) So, um, actually tell me about a day in, a day in a life for you, um, running your business. What does your day look like? Or, you know, just give me one, like a snapshot of your day. I am constantly sprinting from this room to the other room to this room to the other room. So soap making is a lot of mix a thing, wait a little bit, melt a thing, wait a little bit, cut a thing, wait a little bit. So it's a lot of just doing a little bit of work, then waiting and coming back. So (laughs) there's a lot of times where I'm running to go do stuff with my daughter and then I'm in here maybe mixing something real quick, then I'm going back out there, then I'm in here mixing something. I do a lot of my soap making during the day because I turn it into content. And then nighttime, most nights looks like packing orders, maybe doing stuff on the computer, trying to answer emails. So it's a lot of just finding time where I can get work done. So this is a lot of just running around, fitting in as much as I can. Um, Some days I get a lot more work done than others. (laughs) All right, so the beer soap, you put that one out on Instagram and I love that one and I was like, ooh, beer. And I know you've talked about the different type of soaps that you can make. Can you tell me that particular beer soap process and is it something that you invented or is it something that you learned? So I did not invent it. Um, I feel like everyone's kind of done just no, I wouldn't say everything with soap, but mm-hmm. like there's so many soap figures out there that have experimented before us. So 
Um, the beer soap was definitely not created by me, but the process for beer soap is you're just boiling out all of the alcohol and carbonation, and then you're just adding it to your, using it for your lye solution, just like you would your water, yeah. but instead of water, you're using the beer, and the yeah. beer just adds a little bit more bubbles to your soap. The sugars in the beer, sugars in soap cre helps to create a stronger lather in soap, so that's basically what it does, but I love adding the fun ingredients because one, I love experimenting. I think that's the fun in soap making. But two, content wise, people are really engaged with that. Like they see me pouring all this beer into a pot and they're like, what is she doing? <laughs> so it's definitely a great aspect for content and then also a great teaching moment. So um, yeah, that that's basically it for the beer soap. Once yeah. you learn a lot of the basic concepts of soap making, adding Jesus. different ingredients kind of it kind of just all goes together and you learn the yeah. different methods and it becomes a lot easier to understand yeah. everything. Yeah. So that's basically what it is with the beer soap. <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely. And I, f I forgot to actually uh, respond to the previous question that you um, answered. Um, yeah, so you were saying that you would be moving from room to different room, you know, like you do something and then you go back. Yep, it's very much for me as well when I'm making products. Sometimes my products, um, I have to leave it for a few hours and then I'll come back to it or even overnight and sometimes you know, three three days. But I was very, very um, impressed with one of yours. I think you said that would take some of your processing. I think was it the mashed potato one? You left it for a month. Was it to let it ferment? So Is that right? So the cure um, and basically – it's just evaporating more water out and that makes the bars oh. harder and last a little bit longer. So that's why with the hot process and cold process soap, you have to let it sit and cure. And that just makes it last longer, yeah. which is a pain when you're a business because <laughs> like, for example, right now, my website's pretty much sold out. I have to wait till those bars are cured to have something to sell. So that is definitely frustrating from a business standpoint, but make it work. Try, try to get as ahead as possible. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, in relationship to your business aspect, you were talking about your website. And as a small business owners, you know, we do wear so many different hats and I'm sure our hats that we both wear for our, bus for our businesses is quite similar. So can you tell me some of the different hats and responsibilities that you're having to deal with for your business? So have you ever heard the... Um saying for for moms a mother's work is never done i feel like yep. that applies to a business owner too so yes <laughs> double whammy with us you know <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so there's always something new in the works so and as a business owner you do everything um i did build my website myself using shopify it's very easy to do they make it so yeah. simple we are so lucky at this time and to be able to connect with so many people over social media and then to be able to sell through that to them through a website like i am just amazed by that that opens so many doors to us as moms so i i just want to put that out there like that that still blows my mind even right now <laughs> like we don't have to go out and sell anything like we can do everything from home um so that's so cool i do all the marketing so i'm everything on social media i don't have any help with the social media yet uh i make all the products i ship everything i do everything right now i'm hoping to get some help soon i had someone who was supposed to come a few weeks ago and help me they didn't show up i was so sad i was like oh am i gonna do this all and then i let myself feel bad about it for like a very small amount of time and then i was like okay i'm gonna, I'm gonna stay up tonight i'm gonna get it all done and it wasn't as bad as i thought it would be oh, i got yeah. it all done everything was okay but as a business owner, it's all you. Like, no one is coming mm -hmm. to get it done for you. Like, no one's coming to save you. You have to accept that everything is on you. So, for example, when I've had jobs in the past, I could look at something and be like, I don't have to be the one to handle that. Like, that's not really my problem. Whereas once you're a small business owner, everything's your problem. Like, any issue is your problem. You have to solve it. You can't just ignore it. Like, everything is solved and done by you even if it is by um recruiting someone else to do it lining it up so that you have someone who's going to make it that day who has the expertise to do it um so no matter what everything's just on you like there is no um i'm sure so and so will get around to it so i think that's one 
aspect of having a small business that has definitely made me a lot better overall in my life is just the extreme ownership of everything that goes on. Yeah, yeah. And I'm nodding going, yep, yeah, that's right, that's right. And yeah, <laughs> you know, relate. I um I was talking to another small business owner, well several of them, and we all sort of seem to have the same, you know, stories or the same sort of um, issues or, you know, problem solving aspect that we need to, you know, solve. And so, yeah, you do, we do wear like a lot of hats. And then we also need to have strategies to manage those different hats that, that we're, you know, that we wear. So what sort of some of the strategies that you have in place to manage all the different responsibilities that you have? Do you have strategies or are you just sort of working as you go along? Hi there, just a quick little word from our sponsor. Now, as you know, I'm a small business owner and this is my small business, See My Curls. So basically, See My Curls, my small business sponsors this channel. So if you have wavy hair, curly hair, coily hair or locks and you like to try some natural handmade and organic products, be sure to check out seemykels.com.au and I hope that will inspire you to continue your curly hair journey. And yeah, let me know how you go. You can either follow me on my See My Curls Instagram page or you can follow me at my Instagram page as well for these channel all right back to the podcast do you have strategies or are you just sort of working as you go along i somewhat work as i go along but i feel like the mm -hmm. biggest thing i do is prioritizing what's actually important so yeah. every single day no matter what i make sure that in some way i show my business to new people so whether that is posting on Instagram and social media and everything, or maybe I go do a farmer's market, which isn't so much in the cards for me anymore, but it used to be. It used to be a way that I got my put myself out there and my products. So no matter what, I make it a goal to show new people my business. And most of the time, most days, that is just posting on social media. Um, I try to post on social media every single day, no matter what. Um, so that's my number one priority, no matter what I post on social media. Uh, second, if I, it really depends on where I am production wise and how many orders I have that need to go out and how long it's been. So for example, I try to pack orders at least every three days. So I try to get it all done on one evening, have it all ready to go to the post office and the next morning, just so I'm constantly caught up on that. I hate taking too long to get orders out. That always makes me feel so guilty. Um, but obviously it's just me. Every once in a while something comes up and I won't get it out for a week. Um, but just trying to stay on top of everything. Uh, I try to make soap almost every single day because that is content for me. And it is also just keeping my stockpile going. Of course, yeah. in soap making, I'm thinking a month ahead. Like what I do today is what I have to sell next month. And you never know when something's going to come up. Maybe you have a viral video and then you're shipping out all this soap and it's like, oh no, now I'm out of soap, which is kind of me right now. <laughs> I'm like kicking myself that a month ago I wasn't making more soap. But over the month, I've definitely scaled up. I have recently purchased a lot of commercial equipment. So yeah, it really depends on what's going on at the moment. Right now, I'm also focused yeah. on re-recording my first soap making class and um, getting another one out there that's on a little bit more advanced subjects. So there's just something always going on. And I'm sure you're like this too. As a small business owner, you always have all these different ideas of yes. things you want to do. Exactly. Like I want to put out this new product. I, I want to start this campaign. I want to, I want to do this. And sometimes you're just trying to just keep up with what you have. And yeah. Yeah. It's just, and all yes. over the place, honestly. I'd That's my, right. Yeah, I'd say my biggest strategy is just making sure I'm constantly putting myself out there and showing new people my business. Oh, very good. Very good. <laughs> and on that note, how, how are you managing your work-life balance? How are you doing that? Because, again, for me personally, I in the past, I used to just work, work, work a lot. 
and I didn't actually have a proper, like a good balance. And my husband would be like, you know, I'll look after the kids. You can go and go to the beach or go for a walk. And I'm like, no, I've got too much. And yeah. I had to, I had to just say, okay, weekends, perhaps I should just have a break and just not do as much. Like if I do have to maybe like post something or message, whatever, but not like heavy full on two three hours working um yeah so that was for me and I, I think I'm getting better and yeah. and the balance is there sometimes sometimes it isn't but the weekends I'm like okay no I I, I have to have a break either do sport take my kids to sport or something so how are you managing your work-life balance um so I love hearing you talk about that because that's something I had especially recently struggled with. So in December, I had my best month ever, like doubled my sales uh, for December and it took over my life for December. I was so stressed out. I was up every night until like 3 a.m. packing orders wow. and just trying to be caught. And even then I wasn't didn't have much time to actually make soap. So I ran out of all my inventory and I was just trying to keep up with packing and shipping and getting back to everyone. Uh, so I really struggled with that. It made me feel so burnt out. I was like, I started this to spend more time with my daughter, to be home, um, to be super present. And this is just devouring my whole life. But then again, as a small business owner, when it's just you, nothing's happening unless you're doing it. So it's so hard to balance the two things because like I said, nothing's happening unless you're doing it. So it feels like you have to do everything and do stuff all the time because if you're not, then you feel like your business isn't moving forward. So it, it definitely was a struggle. I am working on restocking my website, but I've almost been kind of happy that it stopped for a second and I can regather my thoughts and implement different practices to make things more efficient, which is what I've been doing with the commercial equipment. Um, I'm revamping my soap making classes. So it's given me time to focus on like the stuff I really wanted to get done, but I was just yeah. trying to survive catching up. So, and now it's taught me to reprioritize how important it is to just ask for help. So I have someone who's supposed to come and help me on Sunday. So that should be better. Before it was yeah. really hard to ask for help because I'm like, no one's gonna do it exactly like I do. What, what yeah. if they do something up? And you kind of have to accept that no one's gonna do it exactly like you. And that's okay, that's okay. Um, but it's definitely, you know, your business becomes like kind of like your baby, you know? Like I have a hard time letting people watch my daughter. I'm like, that's the most important thing in the world to me. Like I'm, yeah. you're not gonna, um, feed her or cut up her fruit the way I cut up her fruit, you know, like little things like that where you're like, okay, it may not be exactly like me, but it'll be fine. Like everything's going to be okay. So that's definitely a hard point to get over. But also as a business owner, you, once your business reaches a certain size, you can't do everything. You can't do everything and still grow at the same time. So yeah. that's really what I'm learning and going through right now yeah yeah so so i guess that like what you're saying um tells me a lot about some of the challenges I, I suppose that you've had with your business um would you say like have you had even worse like harder challenges with your business or would you say what you've just talked about would would be classified as yes the, the you know the challenges that you've had yeah, I would say I've had humps, but I've always I've always gotten through everything. You know, like one recent issue I've had is I shipped out this big wholesale order and it went missing. Like I still haven't heard anything from UPS on it. I filed the missing package request and everything. And I've had such a great relationship with this customer. You know, he's bought a ton of soap from me. I'm not I'm not gonna be like, oh, that's too bad, you know? Like I want to keep this relationship great. I'm going to eat the cost on this and remake the soap, which in the long run, that is so worth it for me, even just based off of the orders he's placed now, you know, like I've already made yeah. that money back. But in the moment I was like, I was already stressed out with everything. Everything else was already going on. But then, I, yeah. you know, you just have to, sometimes you just have to eat it, you know, with being a small business owner. Um, that was tough. When I was first starting out, 
I had hired a company to do my website and also run ads for me on Facebook. They had, they had taken forever to get it done. They told me they'd get it done in two weeks. It's like a month and a half later and I was new in business. I didn't have my backbone yet. I was like messaging them. I'm like, hey, is this going to be done soon? You know, <laughs> I'm super quiet and shy about it. And they finally put out the ads. They didn't look good at all. They just wrote like, we made soap healthy. And the comments on it was like, what does that mean? Like, what are you talking about? And I just, like my head in my hands. Like, I was like, this is not what I wanted. I immediately fired them. I was like, I don't even want my money back. Just take all this down. I don't want to be associated with any of this. So that was really frustrating, especially because it was a lot of money for me just starting out. Like to pay for anything like that is a big deal when you're new in business. So that was tough. But honestly, with anything, you just keep moving forward. You try new things and it all works itself out in the end. Um, the only way it doesn't work itself out is if you don't do anything. Like if you just yeah. try stuff and you take action, it will just work itself out. I promise you, no matter what it is it will work itself out. It feels like the end of the world sometimes in the moment, but you just got to keep moving. <laughs> yes, definitely keep keep on going. And um, this is a great way to move on to the next thing where the, you know, going through your website and on Instagram, the reviews. Oh my goodness, Ashley, well done. Amazing. Oh. So can you tell me um, one or two of your favorite reviews or feedback that you've received from your customers? So my favorite reviews is always the ones where they talk about that it maybe cured something. As a soap maker, you are not supposed to talk, say, make any claims that your soap cures anything or anything mm -hmm. like that. But every once in a while, I'll get a review of like, this soap really cleared up my acne. And that always makes me so happy because it you just know it made a difference in someone's life or i've had i had a review recently i had posted it to my story of a father talked about that her his daughter had a bunch of bumps on her skin since she was a baby since they started using the soap it completely cleared up and like that type of stuff always makes me the happiest because you just know that it changed their life in a little in a small way instead of just like i love the soap it smells good I love those reviews too. Those reviews make me super happy. <laughs> yeah. But I especially love the reviews where they're like, hey, this really impacted my life. Like my life is a little bit better because I use yourself. So that that's my favorite type of review. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it really is it's quite good getting, you know, reviews. I I get like a, a dose of dopamine and just a whoosh, you know. Oh my <laughs> so god, I love you it. Get the <laughs> Um, you know, when you get the email, like the little yeah. email notification of like, you've gotten a review. I haven't gotten any negative reviews. I've gotten one that was a one star review, but then they wrote great yeah. soap. So I yeah. think it was an accident, but my heart always stops for a second. Yeah. Like even now that I've had like 50 reviews, I still have a moment where I'm like, what if it's bad? Like, mm -hmm. But you're not going to please everyone. No matter no. what, once you've sold a certain amount, you're going to get someone that's like maybe having a bad day or like something, maybe shipping winter. Some, there's going to be an issue at some something. point there will be an issue and you have to accept yeah. that. But I, I still get the like heart stop of, oh, I got a review. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well it is fantastic. And I think it definitely like every small business owner needs confirmation, affirmation. They need to be, you know, told yeah, what you're doing is great. And um, it, it just helps us to just keep going even more because we know our products, you know, work. It's just great having people say say that to us and tell us. And then it also help build up, up you know, business. So Exactly. exactly. Yeah. I love the reviews. I love them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Now, Ashley, we're getting close to the end of our interview. And I just have a quick look to see if there's anything else that I um, have missed. And on that note, is there anything that you would like to say that I may have not asked you? Um, that's a good question. I don't think I have anything. I <laughs> I tend to let it all out as I talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the other thing too was um, time and flexibility because I think that was how I found your one of your viral videos on Instagram. It was um, 
that you started your business because you wanted to spend more time with your daughter and then all of a sudden everything just sort of, you know, change. Do you think that you're you're getting, like most of the time, that you're getting that time and flexibility in your business? Or I know you've said a lot about, you know, you've been swamped and you thought you wanted to have more time but you're just doing so much are you do you feel at this stage that you're still getting that time and flexibility in somehow yeah last month I definitely felt like I was pushing that I was like oh, yeah really why I started to do all of this so last month I definitely had to take a hard look at everything that was going on and go okay what can I do differently to be more efficient, save time, and also maybe start handing some of this work over to someone else who yeah. does want the opportunity. So that's definitely something I had to look at last month. But for the most part, yes, I definitely do get to spend a ton of time with her. Like today, we went on a nice long walk. Um, tonight, I'll probably end up get, catching up a little bit. Sometimes it is a trade-off of, okay, I got to spend a lot of time with her today. That means tonight I'm going to be up for an extra hour or two working, which is definitely worth it for me. I'm so happy that I have the flexibility and it's such a blessing that I'm able to make that trade off. So overall, it works out. Um, like I said, last month definitely had to <laughs> take a look at things and see what I could change. But I'm actually amazed <laughs> by how much I was able to how much of a change I was able to make by just buying the commercial equipment and making those the bigger batches. And the only reason I was able to do that is because I did have that really hard month in December where it was super hard to catch up on anything, everything, but I made all that money so that I could invest in all the commercial equipment. So now it's kind of balanced itself out. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I guess as a small business owner, we we all, we need to be sort of quick to to come up with solutions to our yes. problems and and just be quick thinkers. And like you said, you know, we need to you know have that five minutes to have a cry and then up again and, and get you know ten minutes or twenty minutes done and you know, back and forth. So there is always that um, going back and forth with that with our journeys and I guess that's what makes it so much fun for us yeah exactly and you yeah. learn to just do it because it's only you, <laughs> you know? exactly yeah yeah so so do you find that you get a lot of um support from family and friends with your business I definitely do um family Good. and friends were the first ones to start buying my soap um of course they completed I should start a business so it's been really great and People have offered to come help. The tough thing is I live so far away from everyone. I'm in the Ocala National Forest, so <laughs> middle of nowhere. That's what makes it kind of tricky to find help. But I love it out here. It's so beautiful. Um, I think yeah. part another reason my content has done so well is you just see the beautiful trees out this window and that window. <laughs> we have an orange tree right there. So I think it adds a magical feel to the content. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everyone's been super supportive. It's definitely been a great experience. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing too that I forgot to ask you, which I will ask now, is that the name for your, of your business, My Healthy Soap, was it um, like what made you come up with that name? Oh my gosh. I am happy to talk about this because that's another thing yes. people will message me. They'll be like, I want to start a soap business, but I don't know what to call it. I was literally like, I want to make healthier soap. I'll call it healthy soap. <laughs> and then I looked up the domain for uh, the domain name to try to buy it. And it was really expensive to have healthy soap. So <laughs> then I was like, okay, I'll do my healthy soap. <laughs> and that was really cheap. So that's how it came about. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Well, it is it is a great name um, for a business because it really says what it is, you know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You, know, you you can't go wrong. It is what it is. So yeah, fantastic. Um, the other thing too. So the next one that I need. To, oh, so this is the one that I was going to say. So with my small business owners' secrets to success podcast i know it's a long name but it says what it is and exactly. it explains that's everything the that's the best way to do it. <laughs> yeah so each guest leaves a word of inspiration which i call sbo's inspos so the guest before you um left you 
word of inspiration. Uh, of course, she didn't know that it was going to be you. I didn't even know it was going to be you. But so people just leave word of inspiration. And a lot of the time, it really hits home for the next guest. And so your the guest that came before you, um, her name is Rose Shah, and she is a, a sales coach all right and so she left you this beautiful word of inspiration so i'll play that for you and then oh. you can tell me if it uh relates in any way okay i would say my words of inspiration are like you can do anything that you put your mind to and if you if you figure if you have problems you can figure it out you're smart enough to figure it out you could solve any problem in the world so there we go ashley I hope you heard that. And was that okay? Can you tell I me? I love that. I love the that you can figure out any problem. Like you are smart enough. I love being reminded and like reminding other people that you're capable. Like even everyone who's starting out has never done it before. So everything is new to everyone at some point. So keeping that in mind that you can figure out any problem. You can make anything work. I love that because... You can. I truly believe you can. So, yeah, I definitely love that. Because it's all the belief. Like, we all do this because we, at some point, were crazy enough to believe in ourselves. So, yeah. yeah and and <laughs> it's funny because I was thinking it really does relate to all the stuff that you said because, you, you know, you have your class where you're teaching people how to make soap and, you know, you're – encouraging them and saying, you know, you can do this, you can add this once you know the logistic and the sort of the rough idea of what to do. You can add your avocados. You can add your Greek yogurt. You can do your beer and soap. So it's just perfect, really, isn't it? I love that. I love that. <laughs> yeah. All right. And on that note, it is now your turn to leave a word of inspiration again i have no idea who's who's going to come after you and you don't know of course so yeah so you have a, a think and see what you would like to say for them to them awesome awesome perfect perfect <laughs> ashley and i think the next person i'm sure is going to relate because it is just something that i think everybody needs to hear when they start oh, yeah. just like so, what you yeah. were saying in the beginning i feel like we all end up dealing with the same things to a degree as entrepreneurs, especially as we move further along in the journey. Like, I feel like we almost always have the same things happening to us. <laughs> and that's yes. where you can learn so much from watching, like, of course, your YouTube channel, you know, watching all of your interviews um, and other yeah. entrepreneurship podcasts and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, precisely. So, actually, we're again, it's pretty much to the end. So, where can people find you? Now, you tell me places people can find you, and I'll put the links in the in the description below for those on YouTube, and then also I'll put it on Spotify as well, so people can find you. So, okay. yeah, where can people find you? So, my website is myhealthysoap.com. My Instagram is healthy soap mama, and then my TikTok is my healthy soap. Okay, and you're also on YouTube, aren't you? I am. I'm my healthy yeah. soap on YouTube. Of course, yeah. I need All to be right. better about posting to YouTube. Like I said, I really want to get into the long form content, also. But the yeah. YouTube is a lot of work. <laughs> it is. It is. Oh, there's just a lot to juggle. But you know, you could do yeah. the shorts. I think they do pretty well. So you could like yeah. repost your content from your two um, platforms and exactly. that's what I do. Yeah, that's so. exactly what I do. I edit on CapCut and then I just post it to everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very good. Fantastic. Well, Ashley, thank you so much for your time. And I know it is your night time for you there. It is my morning here. So you have an awesome evening and I would definitely be seeing you on social media. Oh, thank you so much for reaching out to me. I was so honored that you wanted to have me on here. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Likewise. All right. Well, you take care.